Hi students. In the last class, we had discussed about cosmic rays and the different types of cosmic rays. We had defined that cosmic rays are high energy charge particles coming from the outer space in all directions. And they can be divided into two. One is primary cosmic rays and the other is secondary cosmic rays. Primary cosmic rays are those which are initially incident upon the outer boundaries of the Earth's atmosphere. And they consist mainly of positively charged atomic nuclei with atomic number up to 40. And about 90% of the primary cosmic rays are protons, 9% helium and the remaining heavy nuclei. And their energies range from 1 MeV to about 10 raised to 14 MeV. Now secondary cosmic rays are produced when the primary cosmic rays interact with the atmospheric gases. That is they collide with the molecules present in the atm atmospheric gas. Now below an altitude of 20 kilometers, all cosmic rays are secondary. On entering the atmosphere, the primary cosmic ray, uh, rays collide with the particles in the air and these collisions split the air molecules as well as the primary particles into smaller nuclear fragments which form our secondary cosmic rays. About 70% of the secondary cosmic rays are mesons, 29% electron-positron pairs and 1% heavy particles. Now let us come to the properties of cosmic rays or the variation of cosmic rays depending on different factors. Now the first factor on which the cosmic ray intensity depends is the latitude or geomagnetic latitude and this is called latitude effect. That is the variation of the cosmic ray intensity with latitude is called latitude effect. Now experiments show that the cosmic ray intensity is maximum at the poles that is uh, it is maximum when the latitude is 90 degree and it is minimum at the equator 0 at the equator and the intensity remains uh, a constant between 42 degree to 90 degree. The intensity remains a constant. This variation of cosmic ray intensity with geomagnetic latitude is called latitude effect. That is the uh, intensity is minimum at the equator, maximum at the poles and it remains a constant from 40 degree to 42 degree to about 90 degree. Now let us see what is the reason for this variation. Now consider a charged particle approaching the earth along the equator, along this equator. Now the force acting on the charged particle moving towards the earth along the equator is given by F is equal to QV cross B. That is the magnetic Lorentz force. Here we see that the direction of the earth's magnetic field is from along this direction. The direction of earth's magnetic field is along this direction whereas the particles are approaching perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. So F is equal to QV cross B becomes F is equal to QVB sin theta where theta is equal to 90 degree that is the angle between the direction of earth's magnetic field and the angle between the direction of motion of the charged particles is uh, the angle between the Earth's magnetic field and direction of motion of the charged particles is 90 degree. So that the net force acting on the charged particle here is a maximum that is F is equal to QVB. And the direction of this force is given by Fleming's left hand rule where the thumb points towards the direction of the force, the forefinger points towards the direction of magnetic field and the 
middle finger uh, the middle finger points towards the direction of magnetic field and the four finger along the direction of velocity of the direction of motion of the charged particles so by applying fleming's left hand rule we find that the charged particles are deflected away from the equator that is the intensity of the charged particles reaching the equator is a minimum on the other hand if you consider the charged particles approaching the poles then the direction of motion of the charged particle and the direction of the earth's magnetic field are the same so it is approaching along the direction of the earth's magnetic field so the net force acting on the charged particles f is equal to qv cross b is equal to qv b sin theta and here theta is equal to zero so that the net force acting on the charged particles is zero so the particles very easily approach the earth along the direction of the poles and the intensity of the cosmic rays here is a maximum because the net force there is zero so that is the reason for the magnetic field intensity to be minimum along the equator and minimum at the equator and maximum at the poles mathematical theory also shows that for a given latitude there is a minimum momentum below which no particles can reach the earth particles with momenta greater than this critical value can only reach the earth while the rest are deflected away now that value of momentum is given by p is equal to 15 cos raised to 4 lambda where lambda is the latitude next we we'll discuss about the variation of cosmic ray intensity with altitude or it is called the altitude effect how does the cosmic ray intensity vary with altitude for this the cosmic ray intensities were measured at different heights from the surface of the earth now mountain stations have been used to measure the cosmic ray intensities at alt altitudes of 2 to 5 kilometers airplanes are used to measure the cosmic ray intensities for altitudes up to 10 kilometers manned balloons are used to find out the cosmic ray intensity up to 18 kilometers and unmanned balloons with self recording instruments are used to measure the cosmic ray intensity up to 32 kilometers and rockets and satellites are used to scan the heights up to 150 kilometers or more than 150 kilometers now the variation of cosmic ray intensity with altitude is as shown it is observed that the intensity rises up to a height of 8 kilometers uh, after which the rise becomes fast from Uh, up to about 19 to 24 kilometers and after that the intensity starts decreasing gradually the same trend was observed when the experiment was repeated at 3 degree north 38 degree north and 51 degree north latitudes that is the intensity rises uh, up to gradually up to 8 kilometers after that it rises steeply up to 16 to 19 uh, 19 to say 24 kilometers and after that it shows a dip or the cosmic ray intensity reduces about that altitude so i hope uh, latitude effect and altitude effect is clear to all of you if you have any doubts please do contact